Good evening, YouTube. Welcome to Tic Tac Tech. This is my video blog uh, as a layperson slash non-engineer into some amazing high-tech, um, sophisticated engineering technologies that I have come to believe through my readings all over the internet and my fascination with technology will be really changing the world and, and the way we utilize energy and live our lives. Uh, obviously, this, this is a picture here of a gas-powered turbine. This is something that, you know, even though I've ridden in jets, 737s, you know, flown uh, across the country a couple of times and uh, internationally to, to Europe once, uh, something I really didn't know anything about. I mean, it's, it's kind of like rocket science. It's super complicated, right? Well, uh, I've been finding more and more that everything that's really complicated can be boiled down to some simple concepts uh, if you, you look at it closely enough. And basically a jet engine or, or a gas turbine just functions by this, this air intake here, takes air, and then there's a, a, a fan here. It compresses that air, puts it at a high pressure, and then that air is injected into a combustion a combustion chamber where they also inject the fuel and because the oxygen and the air is so concentrated inside this combustion area uh, you you have a much more uh, complete and efficient fuel burn and that's why jet jet engines and gas turbines are capable of being much more efficient than reciprocating piston engines like diesel engines or gasoline engines because those have have pistons that are going back and forth and instead of having a continuous burn that that continues to to go uh, as long as oxygen is being uptake and and fuel is being dripped in the combustion engines have a, a new fire starting every time that piston turns and there isn't as complete uh, of, of a burn and as efficient an extraction of the energy that's inside of that liquid fuel. And because of that, gas turbines are also capable of burning much cleaner. The exhaust that comes out of this end is, is usually just CO2, no particulate matter. And the design of this also makes it so that turbines are much more flexible. You can put any kind of fuel into here and it's still going to make this turbine run. I mean, some fuels will obviously more, be more efficient than others but this combustion chamber can burn anything uh, versus you know, a diesel engine or a gas engine. I need to have different specifications on, on all those pistons and all those internal working parts. And the fact that there's only one moving part here, that being the, the shaft that's being spun by the gas push, pushing through this, means that there's much lower maintenance on a turbine. And that's why uh, you know, turbines have a, a huge amount of potential uh, if they're more widely adopted to increasing the efficiency at which we use different uh, chemical, you know, hydrocarbon based fuels. And th the reason this is becoming more and more relevant, I mean, turbines aren't exactly new technology. Jet engines have been around since the 60s, but really the only place we've seen them being used are in giant jet airplanes and in you know, large, large power plants. But, you know, the new technology and revolution in turbines that really fascinates me is the fact that, that, you know, people are starting to figure out how to make them on micro scales. This is a turbine that was featured in, um, in Gizmodo in one of their blogs. And this turbine is is the size of a matchbox. I mean, look at the matchstick here for scale. And this turbine can spin at 500,000 RPMs, generate one kilowatt hour of, of electricity. The article also claims that it's 98% efficient. For, for comparison, most gas diesel engines top out at about 30% efficiency, 25% efficiency when it comes to turning uh, their, their fuel source into actual work and, and power. So that's huge. And, uh, you know, I mean, here, here's another example. This is from Bladen Jets, uh, another prominent company that's really getting into the engineering of these, these micro turbines, these really small sized turbines. You can see just for scale with the person's finger there, like, this isn't exactly going to make a giant 737 fly. 
I mean, maybe they'll put this on a drone, but it's amazing that they're figuring out how to make these things smaller so that they have more applications. And really what's revolutionizing and making these more commercializable and, and more accessible is the revolution in 3D printing because building these things before was just hideously expensive. You have to have special manufacturing to, to make so many of these tiny parts, but with a 3D printer, you can crank these out pretty easily. And, uh, I mean, with, with a tur turbine, these giant, these, these small size gas turbines that are really efficient, what are you going to use that for? Well, I mean, cars is one, and this is a picture of Jay Leno with his Chrysler uh, turbine car, and this was the first vehicle uh, engineered in the 1960s uh, that was designed to run off of a gas turbine and they tried it and it never really took off because as it turns out gas turbines are, are really terrible at moving cars at least mechanically because the, the way that that turbine works is that you don't really have the same fuel efficiency that you know beats gas and, and conventional diesel engines out of the park until that turbine is spinning really really fast and the only time you'll have that turbine spinning really really fast in, in a car you know when you're using that turbine to, to put mechanical work directly uh, is if we're running at top speeds if you're, if you're in the city and you're stop and go you're gonna be wasting a lot of fuel just keeping that turbine spinning and it takes a lot of time well it takes like a you know a delay to get it from running slow rpms to all the way back up to 500,000 rpms so putting a turbine into a car to mechanically run it doesn't exactly work. But uh, what they figured out as the intermediary is you use this, this small size micro turbine to generate power and then use that power to charge a battery. And then that battery runs an electric drivetrain. And you know Jaguar figured this out. This is the C, CX-75. This is a, a concept hypercar they were putting together. And this thing was going to have two of those Bladen Jet micro turbines from earlier, two of these things that would be recharging a completely electric drivetrain and would make this like a really fast car. In fact, there's an article out there where the lead designer of Jaguar says that electric drivetrains are basically going to reinvent cars and they're, because they're so efficient that they get t maximum torque from from zero RPMs, they're going to be able to make cars faster and uh, more maneuverable than we've ever seen during the internal combustion engine period. And, uh, you know, because liquid fuels, hydrocarbon-based fuels, whether they're fossil fuels pulled up from the ground or biofuels refined sustainably or regeneratively from plants or whether those are land-based plants or sea-based plants, algae, hemp, uh, corn, sorghum, sugarcane, whatever, sugar beets, uh, you know, those, those liquid fuels are so much denser than batteries that it's worth exploring the concept of, you know, this integrated system where you have a micro turbine powered by a liquid fuel recharging a set of batteries that then turn a uh, an, an electric drivetrain because the main main problem of the turbine which is that it doesn't have the efficiency it only has efficiency at a maximum speed gets offset once you have the battery and the electric drivetrain system separating it from having to mechanically run the whole car and this is exactly what right speed has done and you know for for Right Speed is, is a company that was founded by the co-founder, one of the co-founders of Tesla Motors, a gentleman named Ian Wright. And he was originally going to try and make his own really nice, fancy uh, super supercar, you know, really fast supercar. And I, I guess he did. He just never got to a production model of, of the Right Speed X1. Uh, but he instead got into this business of trying to make these conversion kits for powering large commercial trucks and in these conversion kits he would take um, take that whole system that I, I just described there's a micro turbine right in here powered by a fuel tank or you know with a fuel tank in it probably some type of compressed natural gas 
or, or biogas because that's that's renewable and sustainable and then this recharges a battery pack right here that then cranks these electric motors so uh you know and what he's found you can look at some of these articles that I'll, I'll link in is that they were able to increase the fuel efficiency of these heavy duty commercial trucks by 60%, sometimes as much as 70% for things like garbage trucks. Because the other thing about putting in an electric drivetrain uh, is that you you now have, uh, you know, those electric motors are also alternators when you're decelerating because you have regenerative braking. And if you have a, a really large mass like a garbage truck that takes a lot of energy to start and a lot of energy to stop, every time you stop, there's a lot of energy there that you can harvest and turn back into powering your batteries. And uh, the, the big thing was that these, these really big ass garbage trucks had a lot of maintenance, not just because of their fuel and their fuel, they were horrendously inefficient with, with running fuel when they were on like diesel engines, but they were also just tearing up their brakes because start and stop, start and stop. So by putting on this electric drivetrain with regenerative braking, they're able to reharvest all that energy when they have so much mass starting and then stopping again and turning, turning the motors as alternators. So, you know, to me, this is, is really like an amazing invention and combination of existing technologies. It's really genius. And I think this is something that has the potential to really change the face of the transportation industry and, uh, you know, a, a really unglamorous aspect and a blue collar aspect of that industry as well, because, you know, nobody really gives trucks the, uh, you know, the credit they deserve or, or truckers because, you know, really they're the things that, that keep our economy going. But, um, you know, this is something that, that's really amazing. Uh, I've, I've put a lot of articles into this video and you can do some more research on and learn more about. But I, I think that in three years, four years, we're going to see more and more of these really large uh, commercial trucks, you know, deliver, particularly delivery trucks and garbage trucks first because there's so much potential to harvest all of that waste energy with the start and stop. But, you know, eventually the large transit trucks, freight trucks, uh, etc., going to this type of hybrid electric model with the mini jet turbine being the most efficient range extending, range extender and, and onboard power generator for an electric drivetrain and battery pack. And, uh, you know, I'm also going to include a link to Ian Wright's uh, TED Talk, which I think you should really look into if you want to learn more about this technology. And th th this is a huge way that we can offset a lot of the carbon, carbon dioxide, excess carbon gases, etc., uh, that is really used, burned up by extremely inefficient. Uh, old dated technologies, you know, old ICE diesel engine technologies. So, um, you know, I'm going to continue to add to this, to this series as I have time to. Uh, there's a lot of different engineering marvels out there that I found to be really fascinating and I really just want to share with you guys, whoever out there watching my channel, and I'll be back with that later. West Coast.